What's up guys, this is Jerry McDonald with Oak Trail Dreams. Drew wanted me to let, let you guys know on a story on this beautiful deer that I shot November 28th. It's a nice tall eight. It's not super tall and wide that I really wanted to, that I was looking forward to targeting. But it's a really beautiful deer. The reason why you guys don't see the full body is because I shot it November 28th and it was recovered on December 5th. So the story of that I'm about to tell is I went out that night on the 28th. Didn't see nothing that morning on top of the fields. I go down into the valley and on the next hill above the valley and I sat there all night, nothing. Her mom shot Shot at at four does, got one out of the four at 200 and some yards. Congrats on her. But, stick with the story, this beautiful eight was following a doe, and in front of that doe was another six or a seven, couldn't really tell. So what happened is, is I'm coming out of my stand, I had another 20 minutes before dark, and my girlfriend was sitting up under the field field edge and texted me and asked me since I wasn't seeing anything to see if I would try doing a little drive back up to her coming out of the woods and out of the valley. So I, so I sat there for another 10 minutes, didn't answer her text, and I said, screw it, what is it gonna hurt? So I walked all the way down to the back to the down to the valley before I had to head up to up the next side where she was. And as soon as I got down in the valley under the main road, I'm like dead nuts in the middle. And the next thing you know, I stopped, took my breath, because I had another 15, 20 minute walk up this bluff. And out of the blue, I'm just starting to hear crashing after crashing after crashing. So I'm looking around. I see the six or seven really small coming through and it's probably 30 35 yards away next thing you know here comes a doe right behind him and then not even two seconds later I see this rack walking by I had two areas that I could shoot the one area where I had planned originally was way open and I had myself mounted against a tree because I will be honest I suck at free handing with a rifle I do totally I'll be totally honest I do so the doe got too far ahead and then he's like oh shit she's getting away so she pretty much he pretty much got up hurried up and got right on her tailbone because he was chasing her and then the next thing you know he ran right through my first shooting lane and I couldn't even get the scope on him. So I had not even 10 seconds to pick one more other spot that I had. And it was probably a hole about like this big to shoot through. I had to shoot through brush, over brush, and try to miss two twigs that I didn't know that was behind there until after I shot. And as soon as I had him in the scopes, all I did was pull the trigger. I had no, I had to freehand it, I had to back off the tree, and as soon as he was in my scope, I had to pull the trigger. Next thing you know, after like three hours of searching for him, nothing yet, and the bedding area is just right on the other side of the hill where he was running to, so we didn't really go into there. But we tracked him halfway up the hill, and then when, as soon as my girlfriend's stepdad, Tom, came and helped, we couldn't find no single blood whatsoever on this deer. Come to find out, it's perfect placement of freehanding to a person that's never done it before. I shot high on him, right below the spine. It was on an incline, so it was mostly just fill the inside cavity before it'll start splitting out blood anywhere on the ground. After which, it's uh, we called it a night, didn't really go search for him again. Because on the our thoughts, we hit him. No blood whatsoever. But he ran the whole entire time. But he, 
the doe stopped and looked at me probably at 50 yards and then ran off didn't really know where he went because I lost the sound as soon as the doe started taking off again so we really didn't know where he went we went all the way up the bluff never found anything looked all over nothing December 5th comes around their next door neighbor shot a uh, nice nine with his muzzleloader but didn't really put it down and then uh, a group of them went out there because it wasn't in a good good shape didn't want it to suffer so it literally took three of them to go track this deer down not this one the one that they shot the day before de December 5th and uh, while they're meanwhile they're tracking the other one and trying to find it they run into this one and yeah it just it has me happy no one believes me I put the scope to it and there's two d identical areas that tell me tells me that it's my buck through the scope otherwise through pictures and text messages I can't know what it is but this is the same identical deer that I shot November 28th and I'll t I'll claim it and take pride of it because it's everything matches up of that night once you miss a deer you never get that image out of your head and it keeps replaying and replaying and replaying if it's on a deer like this if it's on a four or a spike you're just going to forget about it because of how small it is this is my biggest buck of this year in my life so far and i'm proud and right now i'm shaking and i'm proud of myself i passed up so many deer and i even passed them up early bow season which is a shame because i just bought a new bow and I wanted to really, really put down a smackdown on one with my VXR that I have. But this is amazing, guys. I just wanted to share the story and share the happiness that I have with you guys. Stay tuned with Oak Trail Dreams.